welcome to our webinar. My name is Monica McMahon, and I am here to walk you through where to capture in your network so you can put the Wireshark file into Visual Backnet um, or a file from our capture devices. Okay, here we go. So this is the network diagram that we're going to be using for this webinar. It's a fairly general uh, network diagram. You can see here we have um, our network controller, or our head switch. Um, so there's a couple different layers that we're playing with here. We have, um, it's connected to a regular switch, which then goes into three different chains. So this we have two, MS two IP chains and one MSTP chain. Um, that's just for the purposes of our example. We have our router over here, our main server with the web GUI on it, um, and it's connected up to the cloud here, and Visual Backnet is in the cloud. So for our first capture option, we are going to recommend capturing on the server. So you can do this one of two ways. You can capture uh, by taking Wireshark and connecting it directly into that server, downloading it onto your server um, and just capturing on that device. We have talked to a lot of customers, and um, from what we understand, we think that that will get about 70% of your network traffic. It absolutely depends on the layout of your network. But that's our best estimate. Um, that's gonna get any device that's talking to the server. So if this device sends a message to the server and the server responds, we're going to see that if we're capturing the server. It's also going to um, get any traffic that's global. So uh, you're going to be getting, and often a lot of the backnet traffic is global. So you will get a lot of information there. The um, second option that we're going to discuss is, um, is capturing directly on the IP chain. So you'll see here, um, I've, we've wired our little capture device into the IP chain. Now um, I have this, image of our, of our backnet capture tool, you can plug uh, your computer directly into the IP chain and capture using Wireshark, or you can plug one of our capture tools. So our capture tools are a little computer that has the ability to capture, and they also have a built-in scheduler. So you can plug it in and you can have it capture every hour or at 2 p.m. If you have an issue at 2.50, you're gonna capture from 2.30 to 3.30 you can schedule it rather than you having to stand there and plug it in and hit start right at 2.30. Next place we're going to um, look at, oh, and so if you capture on the IP chain, um, you are going to capture all of the traffic within that IP chain. You'll also likely get the broadcast traffic, um, but anything that comes through that chain, you'll see you will miss any traffic that's going down here unless it's broadcasted. Uh, and so that's gonna get a smaller amount of your traffic. But if you have an issue on a specific uh, chain with a specific location, you're trying to figure out which device is causing the problem, that's a great reason uh, to go and capture on that IP chain. Third, we have our MSTP chain. So same idea. Um, you can use our capture device as well. Uh, you'll just need a different connector to wire it into the MSTP network. Or if you're using Wireshark, you're going to need the Steve card um, plug-in for MSTP or, or um, add-on, and that will allow you to get the token passing of the MSTP chain. So that token passing, you cannot capture anywhere else other than on that chain, and that can be really, really helpful for um, minimizing the amount of taking ceiling tiles out and the hard work of actually going to those devices. So you can see all that token passing. A lot of the time we can distill it down and say, okay, these two devices or these three devices seem to be having trouble. We can go look at them, but we don't have to cut the network in half and see which side it's on and cut it in half more. It can save you a lot of time. Um, so all of these capture devices that I've been showing you, they connect directly to Visual Backnet if you're using the Optigo capture tools. So um, if you have an outbound connection to port 443, they will send the data up to Visual Backnet where you can analyze it and see what the problems are. Of course, if you're using Wireshark, you'll have to do that manually. And if you don't have um, an outbound connection or if that's not um, okay with your security protocols, the devices will actually store the data as much as they can and then they'll start erasing the oldest data as they get new data. Another great option, which we highly recommend but can be a bit challenging, is to get a mirror port. 
So if you can put a mirror report on one of your switches um, and mirror all of the traffic from all of your different um, IP chains, MSTP chains, you're going to get all, you're going to see everything. And that will allow you to put a lot less capture tools throughout the network. However, you'll likely have to work with IT and it can be a bit challenging. But if you're able to do it, it will make you a lot more successful. So if you get a mirror report, you're going to, you're going to plug that device right in there. And then the same thing goes for your router. Um, if you can put a mirror report on your router, uh, it depends, it really depends on the devices that you're using. But the same thing, if you can pop, plug right into there, you're going to see a lot of different information that you might not be able to get just from capturing on the server. Uh, one of the last things I want to go over here is if you have a device, um, so a JSON is an example, but any, any controller that sits right below the server and all of the traffic goes into it. So I've added this little blue box here as an example. Um, and if you have a, a controller that sits there and the communication between it and the server is proprietary, but everything below it is BACnet, capturing on the server isn't going to be helpful at all. You're not going to see any BACnet traffic because um, all that backnet traffic is stopping at this bright blue device. So in that case, you're going, you can try and capture on that device, depending on what, um, what controller you're using, or you're going to have to find different ways to capture throughout the network. So that will bring you back to the IP chain, the MSTP chain, the mirror report. Um, those will all be good options, but you won't be able to capture above it. Um, one last thing that I will mention is uh, if you are putting the, for the, the server capturing, we have a Windows capture tool and that can be installed on directly on the server. You don't need the hardware to plug into it. Um, and that also connects up to Visual Backnet and allows you to schedule and regularly upload um, capture files constantly. So these are all of the different places where you can capture and visual capture um, to get information into Visual Backnet, and we highly recommend you using whichever ones work for you. Um, again, start at the server is my typical recommendation, unless you have something sitting right below that server, and then build out your network as time goes by. One final recommendation, if you have uh, an issue on a specific IP or MSTP chain and you have to go out and you have to capture there, most of the time it is cheaper to buy a tool than to have someone go out there. So we recommend that first time you're going to have to have someone go and install that capture tool. But then if you leave it there and there's a problem in the future, it's already there. You're paying for the um, uploads if you have a site monitoring account. So it's easier to just leave it out there and capture that data all the time than to have someone go and bring it back and move it around. Um, and that can save you some headaches in the future as well. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a good rest of your day.